G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for yet another video. Before we get into it today, I do just want to say thank you to everyone who got around the personal YouTube channel that I mentioned in my predictions video. For those of you who missed it, I've actually started another YouTube channel called Jesse Thomas. If you're interested at all in seeing me produce some non-footy content, you should definitely get around that. But I do just want to say thanks to everyone who did. Uh, it's a great show of support, so thank you very much. Anyway guys, back onto footy. Yesterday, as I'm sure many of you would have seen, AFL.com released its State of Origin sides. Um, for WA, South Australia, Victoria, and Allies. So in this video, I'm just going to be reading through the article and just telling you what I think about it. I think for a lot of you, the state of origin idea is pretty interesting. It certainly is for me because uh, it's something they've kind of abandoned in recent years for a variety of reasons, but it is always interesting to see and uh, have conjecture about who we think might be the best team. So what I'll do is I'll just scroll through the teams and uh, just let you know what I think. So first up, we've got the Allies. Looking at the back line straight up, that is a fairly solid looking back line. You've got Pierce and Andrews. I didn't actually know Andrews was... I thought he was Victorian for some reason. There you go. He must Maybe he's a Queenslander. That would make a lot of sense. Uh, you got Zach Williams. Harbrow as well was another one who surprised me. I don't know where I thought he was from. That back six is looking pretty damn strong. Um, Jeremy Howe, great player who's really reinvented himself as a defender. Pierce and Andrews probably lay claim to being like the second and third best defenders in the game right now, maybe even third and fourth if you're counting Ransom or Governor ahead of them, which a lot of people do. Moving on through the midfield, you got Dane Beams there, is the absolute standout. Um, he's probably the only elite midfielder they've got. Oh, maybe Zorko, you could, if you consider him an elite midfielder, he's kind of pretty inconsistent. Robertson, he's good sort of enforcer through the midfield. Isaac Smith, you know, is a good player. On the whole though, that midfield, it's, it's not too bad actually. It's better than I thought it would be. Um, Falls off a little bit in the bench. You got Steele's probably the first mid off the bench. Um, but you know, Wits is a pretty good ruck. Hopper has kind of made a name for himself this year. He's actually been one of GWS's better midfielders, and that's saying something because they have a very deep midfield. That forward line is, yeah, no, I rate it. Walker and Hawkins, uh, probably top six key forwards. I don't know. I'm not a huge Taylor Walker fan, but you know, he's, he's still a pretty good player. Bruce is an absolute goal machine. Everyone knows how good Heaney is. Charlie Cameron. I'll tell you who is a bit unlucky not to make this side, and uh, I'm definitely biased. That is Willy Rioli. I think the point of this was so that they would pick players who are actually fit right now. So as though the carnival was this weekend, which would explain why Rioli's not there. That being said, it would be hard for him to break in. Alex Sexton is having a great season. Um, is Willie as good as Daniel? Maybe, I don't know. I'm an Eagles fan, so probably not qualified to really make that call. Anyway, that's a fairly solid side. Um, yeah, it's probably better than I thought it was going to be. So we'll just scroll down. Um, Tipper on the bench, jeez. Oh, who have they got missing? No, oh, Ben Brown. Interesting, interesting. I guess if you go on current form... It's justified that he misses, maybe, but I don't know. I, w I would have him ahead of Taylor Walker, personally. All right, now, look, we got South Australia. First of all, we'll look at that back line. Yep, fairly fairly strong back line, actually, very strong. Um, interesting that Homsch is, uh, is cracked the 22, because if I'm not mistaken, he kind of left Port last year quite, you know, quietly. Like, he just sort of left Gold Coast in a, in a fashion that suggests his career was kind of almost over. Um, you know, it's kind of the, the way for a few players who have gone to Gold Coast is kind of to resurrect their career. But uh, no, he's actually having a really good season. I do rate him. And he was really good at Port a few years ago as well. Hearn, Daniel, Davis, Laird and Smith are all really good defenders as well. So that's, that's a very strong back line straight off the bat. The midfield, I think, is kind of where South Australia is let down a little bit. You, you Best midfielder by far and away is Lucky Neal. Um, he's having an amazing season. Um, but, you know, Hewitt, Redden, Dumont, Polek, they're, they're all decent midfielders. But if this is a rep team coming up against, you know, Victoria, South Australia, I think this is where, um, the, this is the part of the ground that lets them down the most. They've left out Bryce Gribbs. Bryce Gribbs. Uh, and on current form, you kind of understand why. But, um, you know, surely, surely he makes a side um, if you're just picking holistically. Is that the right use of the word holistically? I don't think it is, but uh, we'll go with it. Interesting, they got, they've plonked Scotty Lice at, at full forward. Maybe that, off the top of my head, I don't know who is another South Australian really good key forward, but uh, I don't know about the goal scoring power of Lysett and Stanley uh, like lining up in the forward pocket. Connor Rosie as well is a bit of a controversial one. Not controversial, he's just a first year player who's having a great season, but uh, 
I'm a little bit surprised that he's made it off the back of eight games. He's a really good talent, though. But I think if, you, if you're plotting him in your, in your rep team, shows a little bit of a lack of depth. Lincoln McCarthy's a bit unlucky. I, I've, I've really enjoyed his work. Puapolo as well. Uh, Greenwood. Uh, yeah, I reckon th- that those plays here, the ones that are missed, probably make a good case for making that team. But anyway, we'll move on. Brody Grundy, obviously, best ruck in the game. So Grundy and Lysette is a very good one-two punch, actually. And then Reece Stanley, who I didn't know was South Australian. Um, they're, they're a bit spoiled for choice there. Probably too, much, too many rucks. <laughs> too many rucks, but there you go. And West Off can ruck, can't he? All right. Oh, here we go. Now we're dealing with the big boys. Look at that back line. Gee whiz. That's an almost an all-Australian back line right there. Flostune, Blitzarbs, Moore, Stewart. Gee whiz. Um... Who have they left out? They left out Dylan Grimes on the bench, which is unlucky because he's having a bloody good season. Um, Lockie Whitfield, arguably one of the best performed players in the competition this year. Yeah, Sicily, we know how good he is. Gee whiz, yeah. It'd be a tough for a forward line lining up on any of those defenders. The midfield, it doesn't get any weaker. you got side bottom, Pendlebury and Kelly. Um... Dangerfield and Oliver. Interesting, they started Oliver over Trelaw. Maybe it's not that controversial. Oliver is a bit of a freak, but I think Trelaw is actually having a really good season. Um, I think he could go quite high in the brown low this year. Um, gee, yeah, look, across the field is amazing. Bontempelli, Cameron, and Martin. Now, Martin, on current form, does he start on the field ahead of Boak? That's what I want to know. I, I'm a little bit surprised by that. There's a little bit of uh, name value there, but we all, we all know how good he is. He's definitely one of the best players in the competition um, when he's on song. To go in Lynch and Ablett, yeah, gee whiz, you don't want to be a team coming up against get defense. I don't even have to look at WA, and I know that this Victoria side would absolutely smash him. Absolutely no doubt, in my opinion. Um, interesting for me as an Eagles fan to see Shuey make the bench. I love Shuey. I think he's a fantastic player. But I would have thought Gaffin would have made the cut just before him. I suppose on current form this year, uh, sorry, Shuey's having a great year. Um, and Gaff's kind of working his way back into it. He's got a lot of the ball, but hasn't really found himself in damaging positions. But I think that's kind of symptomatic of the team not playing as well as they could have. And they haven't gone a second ruck here. McAvoy's unlucky not to make the side. Um... But you can understand with the talent that's just like crammed into that side, you can understand why they would probably just play Gorn as the first ruck and then, gee, you could get, I mean, you could bloody get Tom Lynch or Bonds and Belly even as a second ruck there. So, geez, that is a formidable side. All right, we'll scroll down and we'll finish up on WA real quick. Uh, Backline, controversial straight up. They pick four key backs and Sam Taylor. I love Sam Taylor as a player. Swan District's boy, but um, that one is a bit of a shock and call to cram a fourth key back into the side. Let's let's just skip down a little bit. I want to see who... The, okay, so they picked him over Daniel Rich, Nathan Wilson as well, uh, even Ben Stratton. Uh, all, all quite controversial, in my opinion. But he's a good player of the future, and I imagine he will be there, um, you know, hypothetically. If we was a state of origin team in a few years, he would uh, probably be one of the key position spots. Um, Hooker and McGovern, yeah, it makes sense. Rant's not available. Um, gee, they've got some good key back talent, don't they, WA? Shepard's having a great season. He's, I don't think he'll make All-Australian. He just doesn't have that name value, but he's, he probably deserves to be in the conversation. Um, and then, yeah, Johannesson on the other flank on uh, the former Norm Smith medalist. So, <sighs> moving on. That is a strong midfield. It really is. You've got Pat Cripps, obviously, one of the best players in the competition. Arguably the best midfielder, some people are saying. Tim Kelly, you know, probably leading the Brownlow, in my opinion, at this point. And Mitch Duncan's having a really underrated year as well. And then Fife and O'Meara. Yeah, Fife as well is just having a fantastic year. Um, definitely Brownlow chance. O'Meara is also having a great year. I've been talking him up a lot. A little bit maybe controversial that he's a... He's on the ben- sorry. He's on the ball, and Cornelio starts in the forward line. I mean, I guess Cornelio is a better forward than O'Meara, but uh, still, like you know, Cornelio should really start on the ball, in my opinion. And I've sk- kind of skipped forward again. Here's the the forward line. Aaron Norton plonked at centre half forward. Yeah, as I said, like if you if you're basing it on this year, you know, he's probably been better performed. Kennedy probably doesn't deserve to be there on form this year, but because he's like one of the best key forwards of the generation, you can't skip him out. But he has been relegated to the forward pocket, so uh, there you go. Brandon Materia is having a great year. He's he's a funny player. He's 
I, I say front runner, and I said it before about someone else. There's not, not anything. There's not actually anything wrong with being a front runner if you're good at it. And Brandon Matera is really good at it. Uh, he's a great goal scorer, and I always thought he'd do well on a good side. But he's this is the, probably the best side he's ever played in Fremantle this year. So I love Walters. Fantastic player. Can run through the guts as well. That midfield is quite strong. And yeah, on the bench you got Yo and Sheed who are having great years. Brad Hill. Another fantastic player. And Rory Lobb probably wouldn't be there if Nat Nui was fit, although he's having a good year as well. So, all in all, if you, comparatively, I'm thinking I'm thinking Victoria smash everyone, but WA is the, the, the side with the next best chance, and then South Australia is a fair way behind with the Allies, in my opinion. Um, sorry, South Australia people, but um, I think that's evident on the players that are, have been picked. So, there you go. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider throwing us a like or a subscription if you haven't already yet. Tell us what your thoughts are in the comments as well. Do you disagree with me? I know many of you don't hesitate to let me know that you disagree with me, but that's fine. Just keep it coming. I like the discussion, so it's all good. If you use the Instagram platform as well, throw us a follow on that as well, at TrueFootyOfficial. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great weekend.